Is this the way the land is right? Clippity clappity, clippity clap. <gasps> Mother of three Tabitha knows how autism affects the lives of those who have it better than most. She has three kids, Mackenzie, who is four and a half, London, aged three, and Oscar, who's 10 months old. Both Mackenzie and London are two of the 80,000 people diagnosed with autism in New Zealand, which means there is a higher chance that younger brother Oscar could have autism too. And having several kids with autism presents unique challenges. Well, I've got multiple kids. We're still waiting to see which ones they have multiple issues, even though they're both autistic. There's some things that one kid will love and some things the other kid will love. And then you take them to an autistic play group and again, like so one kid will be really sensitive to certain thing and another kid will be sensitive to certain thing. And there's a saying that if you know a person with autism, you know one person with autism. And that's where the Autism Resource Centre hopes to help. It's a new purpose-built facility designed to house all of the different services available to help those with autism in an environment that is comfortable for them. It's the brainchild of Autism New Zealand and its chief executive, Dane Dugan. So we spoke to families and adults when I first started and there's clearly a real lack of support anyway out there So, because autism is a relatively new diagnosis. So the journey for our community can be quite convoluted and quite confusing. And what families were telling us was they'd go through a system, they'd get their, they'd, they'd get their autism diagnosis and then given a couple of brochures and wished, wished all the best. So that sparked the idea for this place a converted industrial warehouse that has been completely transformed at a cost of millions of dollars into what Mr Dugan is calling a one-stop shop for autism services. And he says this facility is an Australasian first. He took me on a tour and showed me how everything, the lights, wall colours, wall textures, the furniture, have been carefully chosen to accommodate any kind of sensory issue, which was common among those with autism. Our community don't really like waiting rooms, it's not a nice environment, so what we've done is rather than a waiting room, we've put a space that should be fun for the kids to play in, get them comfortable coming in. This is an adult quiet space, so with our community, if they're starting to feel a little bit overwhelmed, it's just a sort of neutral space they can come into. Um, you'll note as we go through this that um, there's a theme of blue and green. So the blue theme is a way to visually tell people where to go to make it easier to do it that way, to direct them in the right area. Blue is adult supports and office space. Green is child supports. So we're just going to go through here and keep that in mind as we go through. Um, some of the key features in, in all the light, actually all the rooms where we will be delivering a service to our community, we have it to be um, light can be changed, all the sensory overload issues, all the sensory issues can be changed. So if kids like it bright, they can have it bright. If kids like it light, they can have it um, light. And, and if they want no lights, we can have no lights, but we can adjust those lights accordingly to the person who's coming in. Um, this is probably one of the more unique spaces in the building, and certainly this is one of a kind. This is a NZCT funded expression room, which is very kind of them. Um, you'll note in this area that this has actually been designed as a climbing wall. We're not quite using it as a climbing wall yet because we've just got to figure through the health and safety components of that. The building also includes offices, a coffee area, and a yet to be developed rear courtyard. Among those who will use the space is the Victoria University Autism Clinic. Its therapists work directly with kids and their families. The clinic lead is Dr Hannah Weddington. And the two key challenges are firstly uh, quite long wait times for services um, which our clinic tries to address and also um, a relative lack of individuals who are trained to deliver high quality evidence based intervention. Before a facility like this was available, support groups and therapy sessions for families like Tabitha's had to be held in less than ideal locations. I've never had a place like this that we could go to. We have, there's a local um, play group um, for autistic kids that we go to on a Monday morning, which is great, but it's held in a church. If the church has got something on, there's a problem. There's a whole area of things in the church, which obviously we're constantly dragging the kids away from. They're climbing over all the pew seats to get to the organ and get to the candles. But this is a community that's growing in New Zealand, especially as awareness of the condition increases. We thought it could access up to 15,000 members of our community, but that community just keeps growing. In Wellington for Checkpoint, Logan Church.